Channel. Here we are, powering along the Leicester section of the Grand Union Canal, heading towards Foxton Locks. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's spring, the sun's out. Didn't be mistaken to think it's summer. We've got the shades on, it's absolutely beautiful. So we've been doing loads of maintenance. I've done the whole black in, I've done the cabin painting, we've had a survey, we've changed the propeller, we've done all that lot. And that's time to service the engine. So I gave the engine a service. I mean, yesterday I ran through doing the valve clearances, which I thought I'd just film for you and show you. It's a three-cylinder engine, a Lister HW3, as you can hear, she's purring away in the background. Put it on there, we've got the butty on the back. She's purring away, putting us along here. I thought I'd show you how we set the valve clearances on our Lister HW3. Have a look, see what you think. Morning. Right. 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 As you can see by other videos, we've done a lot of jobs on the boat, we've done the outside stuff, the cabin painting, the blue blacking, various bits and bobs. And now it's just time to do a little bit of maintenance on the engine. So yesterday I changed the um, filters, changed the oil filter, the oil, the fuel filters, give everything a check over, did all the nuts and bolts, check the fan belt, check the engine mountings, did everything. And this morning now it's cold, I'm just going to do the valve clearances. So I just thought I'd show you uh, doing that and then I'll show you around the engine afterwards. But I'll just show you how I do the valve clearances. Um, she's a Lister HW3. We had to put in in 2019. Took a National DM2 out. And put this in. It's a three cylinder engine with slightly more power. Better for towing the butty around. So yeah, as I said, I'm going to do the valve clearances this morning. And I'll show you how I do them, how I've taught to do them to find out you know which cylinder wants adjusting. I haven't got any timing marks on the front of this one, so we just work out the old school way, the way I was taught. I'm sure there's lots of other ways. Um, but yeah, this is how I do it. Okay, as you can see, we've got the rocker covers off. Uh, we haven't got any timing marks on the front of this one. So what we've got to do is work out which um, cylinders, uh, which valves are open. So which cylinder we know both valves are definitely closed and therefore on the rock. So just by turning her over here on the crank on the front, you can see on number one cylinder and number three cylinder, we've got valves open. Therefore the middle cylinder, number two cylinder, they're definitely closed. And you can feel that because you can feel the plane. I and mean, I can already tell you that that one there wants to just a little bit. It feels a little bit. A little bit bigger than it should do so yeah that's how i do it so you look for a valve open on each cylinder so you've got um let me tell you right so you've got exhaust valve on number three and inlet valve on number one are open uh, and the middle two um sorry the middle cylinder they're both closed so that's on its compression tray um, both valves are shut and sealed, pistons coming up and it's compressing. So that's how we do it. So we need them in the middle, on the rock as they call it, and that's how we adjust them. So yeah, let's get feeler gauge in there and um, see what they're like. Right. Oh, that one's a touch loose as well. Yeah, so they're, bit, they're, they're both a touch loose. Um, I've, I've looked up the valve clearances in the manual. Yeah, I'll just put a picture of it up now so you can see what they recommend. Um, it says 0.05, I think, in it, to 0.10 mil. Um, so I, I'm going for 0.07. I'll just go in the middle and fill that there. But yeah, they just they both want just nipping up. So we'll do that. Okay, so what we've got, I'm sure you know, but I will show you just in case. So this is how you adjust the valve. So you've got the nut there. The spanner goes on there, half inch. So you have to just back off the lock nut and then the screw in the middle it's like a grub screw that you adjust with a screwdriver. And I can't do that. I'm going to fans to do it. So I'm going to have to put you back down to show you. But basically, we undo the lock nut. We screw it in a little bit to close the gap down. And we unscrew a bit to open the gap up. And then once we've got the setting right with the feeler gauge, we lock the lock nut back up. And that should be it. Okay. So like I said, we put the... Uh, Spanner on there, we just crack that off, just go up a little bit where we put the finger. Here we go. So I've already screwed that in just a touch. And then we just want to feel it. You don't want to you don't want to put it down so that it's um 
you know, causing the valve to open. You just want to feel it drag. That's all you want to do. So a little bit more. There we go. I can just feel that starting to drag on there a bit now. Now you could do it too much where you have to force it in. And then, you, you know, you can literally sort of be forcing the valve down to get the feeler gauge in if you're not careful, which is incorrect. You shouldn't be doing that at all. There you go. That feels a little bit of drag. So now we have to just keep that screw very, very still. Well, perfectly still. I've already turned it. Look, so we'll, we'll do, let's have a little guess there at the minute. But we'll just put that on there. It doesn't matter. You can adjust these. And there you go. Perfect. So that's that. Nice little bit of drag. I wish you could feel that because that's... Although you can see it's going in there, you can see I'm not forcing it, anything like that. It wants to get a bigger feeler gauge. Let's get a bigger one. What have we got there? 0.19 massive. See, now that won't go in, but I could, yeah, I could force it in. Listen. But you can tell it pushed the valve down because you can hear the valve spring back up. You get this one in. Absolutely perfect. Just the last bit of drag. And as it said, actually, 0.05. Between one of So if I put the 0. Oh, yeah, that's, that's loose. And then if I put the 0 0.10 in, you can see that. There we go. Yeah, and that's tight, but we'll go. It doesn't actually spring the valve up, so it's not too good, not too far away. So the middle road, 0 0.07. Perfect. Right, that's that one. So we do both the valves on that, so let's just make sure I've locked that one at tight. I'll yeah, but away and I probably forgot them. Now we've got that off, get the feeler gauge in there, pick that up, you can get it right, put the lock nut back on, hold in the grub screw. And it quite often changes when you tighten it up, so you just have to, yeah, it's a little bit of touch, touch on the loose side. And sometimes you just have to fiddle around with these two or three times till you get it right, but worth getting it right. And right now I'd say that's just a touch too tight, like I say. Make it up. Just back it off a touch. Crack it up. It's when you clamp it up, it's that last little bit, it just takes the middle adjusting screw around with it. So you just have to counteract that a little bit. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Well happy with that. I'll just check that I have Flip that up for a little bit, yeah. Perfect. Right, that's the middle cylinder on. Oops. Now we crack it round to the next cylinder. Oh, you come for a lesson. My wife's looking through the door. There we go. We're on compression, right? So, okay. So that's gone over now. Going round, what we got now? We got that one we just adjusted going down. Oh, I just need to go a little bit more. You just got to beat the compression. Obviously, when you do it by hand here, this engine has got good compression. That's why these two here, hear them? These two here are on the rock, it's on compression stroke, it's on exhaust, it's on inlet. So we can adjust this same as we were before. I could feel they're a little bit loose. Like I did. Let's just put a uh, slack array as they say, slack array. So we'll knit them up a bit. No matter which one, which way round you do this, as long as you look at do this cylinder, obviously. But I mean it doesn't matter which valve you do it in, they're both on the rock. They're both in the adjust position. You just keep just turning that screw till we get the drag. Try and hold it back while we've got that nut up. There you go. Right then, hope you saw that. That's the valve clearances run through, three cylinder away. Um, they're all done, they're all adjusted. I'm happy with them. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, whip the exhaust cap off the roof and just fire up. I'll leave the tops off there and we'll just, um, you can just have a look at the valve gear running away there. Uh, not something you get to see all the time. So yeah, I'm just gonna go and whip the cap off the roof. There 
here we go because obviously we've got um a roof exited exhaust you see the silencer goes straight out of the roof there so we always put a cap on at night or basically always put a cap on when the engine's not running to be fair any moisture or anything naughty things down there do we so um okay let's uh let's check where the throttle is let's put a little bit of throttle on and let's fire her up <laughs> Turned it off again, a bit noisy that wasn't it? But yeah, you get to see the valve gear and the rocker gear all working away there, yeah, it's nice to see. But yeah, it's all good. You've got these little copper pipes on there, these are oil feeds that feed up to the top. The injectors are tucked in here. Let's get you a bit nearer. Let's get you a little bit nearer if we can without getting the sun in you there. Yeah, so the injectors are just tucked in the side here. These are the injector pipes. They run down the side of the engine. This side plate actually comes off down here, but they run down the side of the engine and then you've got the uh, individual injector pumps in here. Uh, and then you've got the fuel return off the injector pump um, back out. Now, I've had this trouble and it's common trouble, unfortunately, with listers that these copper pipes, they become cracked, you know, everything's vibrating a little bit, they're bit all um, around the olives, they're already soldered together. And the first sign of it is you start gaining uh, oil on your dipstick. You're actually getting more oil in your engine. But it's not oil, obviously. You can't make oil. But it's your diesel. You, so your diesel's leaking into the engine. Um, just something to keep an eye on. Um, you know it's that. And you might notice your... Oops, turn the ignition off. You might notice that the um, oil pressure drops a little bit as well if you get a lot of diesel in there. But common thing with them, just keep an eye on them. I say I had it once. It was actually on the injector pumps down the side here. Uh, when I changed the fuel filter on the back end here, there's the fuel filter just on the back end there. It's a fuel filter which I changed yesterday when I serviced it. Um, when I bled it up, so each pump has got its own bleed screw. When I tightened them up, one of the little copper washers must have just just cracked a little bit. And then just over the next couple of days, I just noticed. I didn't notice initially, to be fair, that the oil had gone up. Um, but I, I was running on a lot of the second down. I noticed the oil pressure was dropping off a bit. And I, I shut her off straight away. Come in and had a look. And sure enough, yeah, the, the oil level was above the maximum on the dipstick. So keep an eye on it. Known to listers, probably to other engines as well, but I only know about listers. Um, something to do. So anyway, let's get the rocket covers back on. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. There you go. She's all back together. This is another new addition I've just put in this day tank. I put a bigger day tank in. It's about 40 litres, this day tank. I only had a small day tank before, which was uh, 15 litres, but I could only ever get about 12 litres in it, which gave us about six hours of running, towing the butty. Um, it weren't really enough, to be fair. But yeah, so yesterday we changed the oil filter. That's down there, it's a cartridge. It's a bit awkward, because there's a bolt underneath, comes up, drop the canister out, change the cartridge, put it back on. Uh, we changed the fuel filter, just a standard sandwich type fuel filter on the top there. We changed that. Um, so that with the valve clearances, had a good check round. We've got the Neo alternator on here, which puts me out about 130 amps when the batteries are right down. So we get some charge in the batteries. Uh, it's controlled by the, let's move out of the way. I've got that controlled by a Sterling alternator controller. Um, twin belts on the front. So we've got the belts for the alternator there, the belts for the water pump there. Um, that's it really what else can i show you i don't know let's prompt you up on the roof put the exhaust on and we'll fire up and and you can just listen to a run outside it's all pipe on let's fire up <laughs> set up 
I forgot to mention in there, I was just dropping back down. That's the alternator controller now. Um, it's just stepping the alternator up to the next stage. So that will actually be, because our batteries are quite down actually, that will actually be putting about 120, 125 amps in the batteries right now. So it's working quite hard. Settle down, the engine's cold obviously. Yeah, that'll be our main stuff. I didn't mention, uh, got a gearbox on the back there, a PRM gearbox on the back of the engine there. I changed the oil on that yesterday as well, it was just simple enough. Thing. Just something on the bottom, drop it out, put the oil in there. They only about two, two litres of oil. Um, the Lister engine holds a lot of oil, 11.8, just, just shy of 12 litres it holds when you do a filter change as well. So it's a fair bit of oil. I do it every 200 hours. Um, I do the tappets every 500 hours, so it's, uh, it was fitted. The engine's on 1100 hours now, so um, I'll do it again in another 500 hours. And then they say once you've done 1500 hours on an engine, um, you shouldn't need to keep doing the tappings, you can then do them every 1500 hours. But nah, it doesn't hurt, does it? I can do it myself, so it's nice to keep an eye on them. And there she is, running like an absolute dream this morning, like I say, going across the Leicester summit. Brand new new canal, Leicester section. Got the Bertie on the back, Nicky down the back there, steering the Bertie. And Reading in Foxton direction. Glorious weather, spring has sprung. Feels like summer, but spring has sprung. This is what it's all about. Hopefully, you've liked what you've seen. Hit that thumbs up button, give us a like. Don't forget to comment and please subscribe. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button and you'll keep you up to date with all our future videos. Until the next one, enjoy yourselves and we'll see you soon.